Hi everybody! Hello! So spring is here and we're going to show you guys what we're going to be using this spring to shoot galaxies. So we cannot choose our small mid anymore because it's too small for galaxies and spring is known as galaxy season. So we're going to use our first telescope we will see uh, soon but it's right in the back here. So we're going to go around and show you guys what our gear looks like for spring season. Let's do it! So this is the mount we're going to be using in spring. Um, it's a software BISC Mighty Paramount mount and um, we, it's still new to us, so we have to learn how to use it, but it's supposed to be one of the best mounts for the amateur community, so hopefully it's going to be nice. The better the mount, and the user's knowledge of course, the better the tracking accuracy, especially when imaging galaxies with a long focal length. With a good mount that can easily carry your entire payload, you can track with little to no backlash. Your pictures will look crisper, the stars will be round, and your overall image will be neater. Most people use an auto guider to ensure these issues do not occur. Although a mount with excellent tracking ability will put less struggle on the auto guiding software and let it cruise rather than making non-stop adjustments. A steady high quality mount also helps avoid elongated stars during the more windy nights. Well, up to a point. So if you guys have seen our videos before, you know that we have had this Orion 8-inch astrograph for a long time and we're actually going to be using it this season because it's the best telescope to do galaxies with. Um, we did have to change the dovetail here for it to fit onto the mount, so that was new and interesting. And man, does it look hefty. <laughs> Here's the opening. A nice reflector. The most important thing we are looking for in a telescope for spring season is focal length. The mid 115mm refractor and the Orion 8-inch reflector are not that different when it comes to focal length. After running a few tests on Sky Safari using our scope display simulator, we realized that 644mm of focal length is just not enough for most galaxies. It is perfect for groups of galaxies, like Mark Hyun's chain for example, but the Orion 8-inch astrograph wins in all other aspects. So the camera we'll be using is the uh, ZWASI071MC. Um, this is a one-shot color camera. I can show you guys. And um, since it's galaxy season, we don't really need a filter wheel. So I think a one-shot color camera is perfect for the galaxies. And um, we're also adding a, a filter here. This is an Optolong L Pro filter for backyard imaging. So if we go into the desert, we're gonna take it off. If we're gonna be imaging from here, we're gonna add this filter here. With a one-shot color camera, we don't have to bother with the filter wheel, which means no worrying about switching filters throughout the night. And the stacking and processing will be faster and far less annoying. Depending on the targets we plan to image, we may break out our ZWO ASI 1600. It is a mono camera which will allow us to shoot filters independently. This is important because we can then add extra data using the hydrogen alpha filter for galaxies with a lot of HA in them. For example, M106, M51, or M82. So the guide scope that we're going to be using is our Orion 50mm guide scope. And we've also attached the ZWO ASI 290 mini. That's going to help us keep track of the galaxies through the night. So normally we wouldn't really even need to have this guide guiding system because this mount is very precise but you know we are still learning and we just want to make sure everything's gonna work properly so we're gonna attach it anyway. It is crucial to have an auto guiding solution when imaging the night sky. Sure you can do without it but only if you have a great mount and will use a small telescope. In this case we'll be using a longer focal lens telescope to image galaxies so it is important to have guiding to ensure the mount always stays on track. The software BISC Paramount Mighty Mount is known to have extremely accurate tracking. It can do well without an auto-guiding solution, but we still feel safer using a guiding camera. And then two last things, uh, we're going to be using the Pegasus Astro Packet Power Box for all the power cables, which is very nice to power everything in the same, you know, in the, in the same box. Uh, this will go through the battery uh, on the field or directly to the power outlet from the backyard. 
And then last thing, uh, we might be using the ASI Air, I'm not sure, because this mount uses um, a software, the SkyX. But if we want to you know, stay in the car in the cold with our iPad, we're gonna just plug this to the, to the camera and use our iPad instead. So we'll see about this. The ASI Air is a great tool if we want to see images appear on our iPad. And the Pegasus PowerBox is a total no-brainer, because with this gadget we can power all of our equipment. Both of these little boxes weigh almost nothing, so it's nice to just stick them on top of the telescope. And that's it! This is our full list of equipment we will be using to image galaxies during the spring season. The key points to remember to image small galaxies are Pick a long focal length telescope over a small one. Make sure to use a good mount and also to have a great auto-guiding solution. Using a one-shot camera will make your life easier. But you can also use a monochrome camera and add hydrogen alpha data to get an impressive and true image. We're still not 100% sure if we'll be using this astrograph or the mid 115mm. Maybe both. Also, we have a question for you. In our videos, would you prefer that we use this Mighty Mount or our Atlas EQG? Does it make a difference? Let us know. Alright guys, so we hope this video was helpful to you. Um, hopefully you know what you want to use for galaxies now. A long focal length telescope is always better than a wide or uh, a small refractor. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mm, okay. And uh, thanks guys. Thanks guys. <laughs>